my talk is uh, based on my, my, uh, my experience and uh, our Latin collection, uh, not based upon my research. That's why my talk probably not organized. So somewhere you don't understand, please don't hesitate to ask, to stop for me to ask the question, make it clear. That's what I'm asking. And, uh, Secondly, my English doesn't work sometimes. And uh, sometimes maybe I ask Gunza and Nella and you know, so how it is. Uh, then <coughs> everybody can image when, when another nation takes over when, uh, another country. Uh, then militarily already take over. And second, the uh, work is uh, establish the administration system. Uh, in order to do that, you need to also use some language corporate. And uh, <coughs> you, uh, one thing is uh, that people know, know the administration system. Second is the administration background of the philosophy. And the thirdly, the people need to know uh, the achievement they made. That's why they need to uh, uh, do something, publish applications, that kind of stuff. And what they did is first is uh, uh, newspaper of course. Uh, this is Tibetan uh, daily newspaper, first newspaper we have now. And uh, uh, uses still handwriting and print that down. That's, we had a newspaper before that in India called uh, Sangir's issues, so Sangir's Avi Melo. We have some issues downstairs. But uh, this is the first time Chinese Communist government published newspaper in Tibet. This one. Day. And uh, secondly, uh, magazines. We Tibetan historians never had a magazine before uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese Communist come. We had a newspaper before, before this. But uh, uh, the Magazine is this is first. Also, we had very first issue. This we call People's Pictorial Magazine, and like his his holiness attend the uh, Chinese uh, Congress meeting. All this stuff in this issue. Really, people want to see to there. This is also a magazine, and uh, to let people know what's to go on and what's uh, accomplished. Same time, another uh, magazine called uh, Nationalities um, Pictorial Magazine. <coughs> yeah, this is the first time published magazine in Tibetan literature history. That's why. And uh, same time, also, they published uh, like uh, yeah, <clears throat> the you know uh, everybody you know like uh, the system shift. Everybody knows it. Tibetan seventeen uh, agreement point. This is first. Uh, issue before pub this is the copy of permit publication. Uh, that's like a system. And another one is like uh, Chinese the systems background of the philosophy, like Marx. Modernos work and Marx's work, Lenin's work, that kind of stuff. And uh, in our library, we have 
the early publications in 50s, 60s, 70s, we have around 600 data-ups. And among them, 90% of the publications are the philosophy, the China's communist philosophy and the administration publications. Only few, only few publications on Tibetan culture is like everybody knows Sajia this is 1954. And some publications, classical literature. Only, uh, I think this number is not uh, accurate, but I believe about uh, five to 10%. That's uh, in 50s. And uh, second, you know, uh, this, all this administration system, publications, and uh, this Marxism stuff, all this from Chinese. Then second issue, we need uh, terminology, new vocabulary. And uh, this is first book of terminology, published 1954. And this has four volumes, worked till 57. And the uh, total first year published this, only have the number of vocabulary about 2,000. And after this, this put it together and it, uh, put more vocabulary together, this 64, and increased 13,000. That means every year, 2,000 vocabulary. And after this, that's, this is third generation of cultural revolution, include uh, cultural revolution, vocabularies have come from. In this uh, book, we have 46,000, 46,000. And this is the final generation, is 91. Now we have 80,000. And in 40 years, and 40,000 vocabulary, uh, 80,000 vocabulary, that means every year increased by 2,000 vocabularies every year from Chinese language. Okay, uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, uh, that's the publication and the uh, uh, vocabulary. And uh, <coughs> during that time, we, had uh, uh, advantage, we had advantage. That is, uh, Chinese government uh, used big lamas at the traditional local chiefs give a high position in local government, different governments. And that's why these uh, figures, they didn't understand Chinese, that's why there is a reason uh, government uh, uh, say, give big attention to uh, Tibetan language. That's why that uh, administration, in administration level, Tibetan language has certain power, not like this, uh, these days. Uh, <coughs> Also, uh, not only Tibetan uh, officials, also Chinese, Chinese uh, cadres also started to learn uh, Tibetans. Like uh, in Lhasa, there's a, uh, in Tokras Yuga, it's mainly that uh, teach Chinese to learn Tibetan. When I go to school, the school is uh, mathematics and the geography, the all subjects that the teachers are Chinese but all of them they speak Tibetan. We learned this, all these subjects from Chinese, but uh, with Tibetan language. The Kukinsanja is my, uh, one of my classmates in college. We went to, when we went to the school, uh, it, uh, uh, college, 
the Tibetans that most teachers are Chinese. <laughs> Uh, that means that time, uh, 50s, uh, not only Tibetan encouraged to Tibetan learn Tibetans, also Chinese also learn the uh, Tibetan language. And the same thing, uh, that them also uh, the start built schools. Uh, in the 50s, some uh, schools also in 60s then spread schools all over uh, Tibet that, uh, like me myself is I think before me like my brother in 60s he went to school for three or, or two or three years most of them like that uh, then me in, on my generation then at least they have primary school system I think uh, we are first generation yeah <coughs> That's before the Cultural Revolution, a little bit of overview of the Tibetan language. Uh, <coughs> then during the Cultural Revolution, mm, <coughs> then things changed romantically. One is, then everybody knows, uh, Local government, the Tibetan lamas, local chiefs, became subject subject of the struggle session. Some of them uh, sent to labor reform. Some of them, most of them, sent to uh, prison. Uh, that way, then that means the administration level. There are no reason. Also, uh, no reason uh, to use Tibetan language anymore. That's uh, one of the uh, uh, then during that time, the also the uh, Chinese getting stronger. Then uh, during that time, the, the Cultural Revolutions, uh, uh, can I say? Stuff I wrote in uh, this book. How during that time, how we learned Tibetan language uh, in school and in society, and uh, and that then uh, basically is really bad. But there's something bad things turned in good things. Like uh, first, that then. Oh, all books bad. Doesn't matter Tibetan traditional or uh, whatever. Anyway, the publications before Cultural Revolution mostly bad, even including movies, everything bad. Then we have one book. That's this. Also, we had first <laughs> issue. This is a Mojitong's quotation book. We call it a red book. A uh, jewelry book, <laughs> uh, yeah, is this book. Then all <coughs> over country, everybody go with them. And how do you pack it? And every day, at least we set in two tents. And doesn't matter if you are literate or illiterate. Everybody, even you don't read, you have make sure have this book in your pocket. Uh, that's why uh, everybody have to read it, everybody have to memorize it, and that's why uh, then Tibetan language uh, spread all over all level of people all over Tibet with this book, and also the revol revolutionary terminology spread all over. Even these days, you ask uh, uh, somebody who doesn't read uh, uh, Tibetan, old people, like 70s people, you ask something revolutionary term, they know. They can explain <laughs> what's that, even they don't read. Uh, all this comes from uh, and, uh, <coughs> this book. And later, when Kesar scholar called Jiangpei Jiangzhou, 
he made an account of the uh, gesture epic publication numbers. He said, total, the uh, gesture epic uh, total probably uh, so far published uh, 100, about 100 different titles. All publications put together, still the number is much less than this book <laughs> publication numbers. This really huge number. Everybody, everybody has this book. <coughs> and plus, and the most important, um, another of the four volumes of collection, selection works. Yeah, that's why. Uh, <clears throat> also, that time, um, the, the joint cultural version, we, uh, the, the whole things changed. Like we mentioned, this all magazines stopped publicate, publish, and uh, only one magazine exists. This is this magazine called the Chinese called. Hong uh, and the Tibetan called Dharma. This is only publication, magazine publication in uh, Tibet. All of them uh, translate from Chinese. And during the cultural revolution, also uh, really big uh, things happened to Tibetan language called Tibetan language reform. That means grammar did some change. And you can see here, uh, also you can see here, uh, like this, like this. And uh, the punctuation is totally Chinese. And uh, they said the Tibetan language is too old and hard to learn. And uh, there's a lot of things, they have some religion uh, test. That's why we have to reform. And this is what example practice this reform language. Uh, the, right. You see here, uh, if, uh, most of people know we have this. We start a sentence or subject, we use this, but here anymore. Not anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, then the cultural revolution and this uh, Tibetan language totally reformed. And this uh, the mainly vocabulary, the verb tense is a followed Tassa colloquial language. I used to say the Tassa colloquial language, which is killer of Tibetan grammar. And uh, you, I used to come like <laughs> because there's no verb tense so clearly, and uh, all depend on the helping verb. And this reform just followed this. Uh, global language. And that's why uh, so simplified. And this is they call revolutionary language, Tibetan language. That's <coughs> uh, during the cultural revolution, one thing. <coughs> uh, happened. <coughs> And also, from that time, then a lot of school, the Tibetan class is banned. And uh, also, the, uh, as I mentioned, all publications before the Kashi Revolution is banned. In school, there's few schools left to teach Tibetan. One's from uh, my hometown. One's from the Kachacha and has a few places. The textbooks only. <coughs> textbooks, again, more than most quotation book. This is every day. And uh, then from this uh, magazine. <coughs> That's what that they even learn some Tibetan. Uh, the, uh, the vocabulary and the grammar, everything, something, it's uh, something uh, different. And that a lot of joke go around because they uh, didn't understand uh, what is the quantity in my, this book. Uh, one example, they said that um, during the Cultural Revolution, Mojit Dong's vice chairman 
Nim Gyo. And Nim Gyo finally, <coughs> they, he escaped to Russia and he, his uh, airplane fell down in Mongolia. And the Chinese criticized them. And then, the, you know, on the meeting, the people criticized Nim Gyo. And Nim Gyo called it Ye Shin Jia That means Ye Shin Jia Yimu Jia Kada Ambitious and also a reactionary. Yeah, and people didn't understand that. Then they said, uh, "Okay, Renchinja Rimuja is two people's name. <laughs> this stolen this Dianpio. Uh, Dianpio? It's a, it's a rational uh, ticket when you purchase uh, uh, food and uh, particularly." Uh, you purchase uh, a mail from a restaurant, you have to, you know, you had to provide this uh, rational ticket. Plus, you know, uh, besides, you, know, you pay by you know, money. So they, in Chinese, they're called liang piao, which is very close to Lin Biao's name. Yeah, which is really uh, the close to Lin Biao's name. The, the people don't understand all this language, and uh, then misunderstood the all two kids, or the story is liang piao, or what's going to happen for this? <laughs> That's right. That in language, there is a Tibetan language, but the Tibetan language is so far away from the traditional language, and uh, the important a lot. And plus, a uh, lot of uh, Chinese words and the new terminology. And uh, these days, even if we speak, speak in, in exam, uh, still we sometimes hard to communicate a lot of words. Yeah, that's... <coughs> mm. But during that, the Yuan Kashi Revolution is uh, 10 years. 10 years, uh, the, there's a lot of uh, uh, political campaign that criticizes Liu Shouqi, criticizes Lin Biao, Critics confusion, critics the Russia, and all of them, almost each two years, had a political uh, movement. Each po political mo movement increased the vocabulary of the <laughs> uh, vocabulary, Tibetan vocabulary. That way, we have such big dictionary. Now, even Right now we say, if uh, sometimes we say, Tibetan language get rich through all through this year. You see, already we have a, a Tibetan dictionary over there. Here, that's the three volumes. That's maybe after one thousand years, we have about eighty thousand. This. After 40 years, we have another 40,000. We can say that's rich. Our language is rich. But actually, um, can I say, the, it, the political movement is short period. After that, the, another political movement said, oh, previous political movement is wrong. That means everything is useless. Even we have so much vocabulary written these days, all this we <laughs> actually uh, not using. Also, I think we, we are not going to use it anymore, except for research. That's during the Cultural Revolution. And uh, then after the Cultural Revolution, we. <laughs> That's uh, after the Cultural Revolution, the, then again everything turned back. First, the people in prison and sent to labor reform in society, then returned back. And he said, uh, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. You can vote again. 
That way, then some of them went back to position, but not anymore.